hello 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 so today we're going to do something that is well not so useful but it looks pretty uh, we're going to create a looped animation while working with fields and some random numbers so here and on the screen i already have like a definition set up because i need to know that it works before i teach um but we are not going to look into it we're going to start it from scratch and you don't need to create anything in uh, in Rhino. You can just start up Grasshopper and follow along. So the first thing that I want to create is a rectangle in which the field is going to be calculated. So rectangle like that. And we need to give it the dimensions, right? So I'll say for X, let's do 1920 and for Y, we will do 1080 just to get a proportion of a screen to keep things neat and dandy there we go yay rectangle so now for this rectangle i will populate it with points populate 2d not 3d 2d right rectangle is 2d so we do that connect the rectangle to the region input like so and it automatically populates it randomly with 100 points uh, what if we need less, and we do need less, we just add a number, a number slider to the N input. That's the amount of points that we have, uh, that we want to have. Let's go for 25. No, let's go for 10. Something like that. Less is more, right? So we have 10 points. And on each of these points, I want to create a field component. So all field components are located under vector field right here. And there are like plenty different tutorials that talk about these. I will not go too deep into it. Let's just say I want my these points to affect the field by spinning the vectors around it or the directionality of the field around them. So for that, I will use spin force. Spin force. There we go. Spin force asks us to give it a plane. In this case, we just give it a bunch of points and it will figure out that the points are flat or the plane on the points is flat on the ground, meaning it will just place an XY plane on each point. So we don't need to translate points into planes before plugging this in. That's nice. Then we do strength. So or rather, let's skip strength for now. Let's have it uh, strength set to 1 for all of them. Uh, we will come back to strength in just a second. Before uh, we continue, let's do radius instead. So for radius, I will do like 200, I guess. Now we can even go further. Just make them overlap. 290, that's fine. Then decay and bounce. We don't really care about those. We will ignore them. Okay, so we have created 10 fields. For each spin force, there is a field that is created. What are fields? Uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> Let's just continue. Those 10 fields need to influence one another and we need to extract one added up field from all 10 of these, right? So a handy node that does that is called merge fields. There we go, merge fields. And we connect it like so. Now the output is a single field where all of these spin forces are added up and we get the final final field from them. All right. So now how do we actually use the field? Well, we use it with evaluate field node, which asks us to give it a field to evaluate the. So we give it the merge fields. And it asks us to give it a point to evaluate the field at. So for points, we need, well, I guess we need to populate the rectangle again, but this time with more points. So I will use populate 2D again. You can do a grid as well if you want to, but I prefer to have it kind of random. Populate 2D, connect rectangle to the R input, and thus it gives us 100 points here, right? So we can increase that amount to 200. 
just to have more. And now we have 200 points. Uh, one thing is that pop these two populates, they don't do random numbers, every different random numbers every time, different random positions for the points every time. They are pseudo-random, meaning that they work with seeds. So as long as two seeds are the same, some points will overlap between this populate 2D and this populate 2D. We can't have that. We need to add a different number to the seed here. The one that I like to use is 666. I don't know. <laughs> no, there's no reason for it, honestly. You can use any 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 number you want. 523 seems good. Okay, so we have our 200 points and we have our field, right? So we're going to evaluate the field that is created here on those or through those 200 points. Just connect like that. That is it. The output that we get is a tensor. Tensor is a vector, basically. Don't worry about it. It is a vector, right? So it has directionality. So I can visualize it by drawing a line, SDL, line from start, direction, length. The start point of the line is uh, the line is going to start from each of these points, right? So like that. Then the direction of the line is going to be driven by the tensor, by the vector, right? Of the field at that, uh, at those particular points. And then length of the line, let's just give it something ridiculous, like a hundred. Very long line, like that. At this point, uh, let's hide a few things. Because it's getting a little bit... There's too much stuff going on, basically. Uh, and I guess we kind of want to see where this uh, spin force is. So I will enable the preview of this one, as well as our lines. So we have that. Not much. Um, you, you can't kind of see much from it. But if I increase the count, you can start seeing that the lines actually follow the rotation values within their respective fields, right? So that's cool. Minimize it back to like 200-ish. Don't need to have too many. And let's continue on with the lines. So one of the problems is that the lines right now start from a point and they go along the vector. No, no, no. I want the point to be in the middle of the line. So what do we do? We move the lines, we move the lines back, backwards, along their vectors by half of the of their length, right? So if they go here, for, uh, go in this direction for um, 100 millimeters, then we move them back in the same direction by 50 millimeters. So we have a vector. And all we need to do is just say, well, let's reverse it. And reversing of vector is just having a negative of it. Like that. And let's just give it an amplitude. An amplitude for that vector. Saying that um, it needs to be 50, right? So to keep it parametric, I will just take this and divide it by 2. You can use a slider as well, like that. Divided by two, so it doesn't matter what kind of value we use here, it's always going to divide that by half. And we connect that to the amplitude input right here, and we have our new vector for movement, and we move it back. Don't forget to hide the original lines so that they're not in the way. There we go. It's a little bit messy. Let's see if we can uh, clean it up a bit. Apparently we can't. It's still messy. Don't worry about it. But either way, now we have points, or rather we have lines, right in the middle, uh, with their points right in the middle, which is what we want. Okay. So that is... That is done, and that is our initial setup. Now, to make it 
interactive. Okay, so I at the start of this video, I said that we want a looped um, animation to get the looped animation at the end of it, meaning that the start and the end of the animation um, seamlessly, if you copy the animation, it seamlessly can continue on looping, right? So we will need to use in one way or the other, we will need to use sinus or sorry, cosinus, cosine, like that. Because if you do a cosine, let's just look at the panel and you hook up, um, I don't like radiance, uh, so I'll just use radiance node here hook it up like so and instead I'll use degrees which will translate this to radians which will feed into cosine and for radians we use 0 dot dot 360 right that's the that's the degrees the range of degrees that we will use very important that the slider goes between 0 and 360 and you can see as I move the slider at 0 it's 1 then it then it goes until, where is it? Come on, give me the zero. 180 needs to be zero. There we go. Or no, sorry, 180 is minus one. That means zero is going to be 90. 90 is zero. So uh, zero equals one, 90 equals zero, then 180 equals minus one, and so on. So we get this kind of a nice cosinus curve by just moving this, um, Finger magic, the, the, the slider. Okay, we have that. So that means any kind of input that we use, not sorry, when we use this as an input, stuff will tend to loop, right? All right, so where do we plug it in? Well, actually, we need to plug it in into the spin force strength, but there is um, a caveat to that. If we just plug it into the spin force like so, let's just do it. And then I change the degrees. You can see not much changes, right? That's because all of the forces are changing all at the same time, right? So the final field doesn't really change because every single point is changed, you know, minimizes or maximizes its strength, but it doesn't, there's no variance between the points. So we need to somehow introduce variance. And for that, I forgot what I did. So bear with me for a second. Yes, now I remember. For that, we will use um, random point generator. A random point generator. And we will add. We will add uh, the random points uh, or random numbers that we will get with the radians and we will use that as our cosines before we connect this like so we need to uh, give me a second I'll figure it out I'll remember the word come on god damn it <laughs> I'm gonna leave this into the video usually I cut this stuff out but this video is short either way, so I'm, I'm leaving it in. Screw it. This is me struggling with, with the recording. Um, we need a random number for every uh, spin force circle that we have here, right? So we need more than one random number. How many? Well, that's the same as this slider right here. How many points do we use for a spin force? That's 10. So we just connect 10 to the N input right here and then add the or, or not add but connect the addition to the cosines and now if if I'm correct then each strength changes right uh, independently from one another which is exactly what we want I can show you this uh, in a little bit higher resolution without the spin force 
actually showing up. See, we're, we're getting there. All we needed to do was just add up, uh, add a, a few random numbers to the addition. One thing here is you can see how, how fast sometimes it just jumps. For instance, this guy right here. Boom, boom, boom. Just jumps drastically. And that happens when the, the, the field ch changes the direction or the spin force changes direction from plus strength to minus strength, meaning it goes backwards, right? Uh, so what we want to do is for this cosine, I just want to add to it plus one, meaning that all um, fields are going to be always positive because cosine will never go above plus one. That means that all of these will be positive. Actually, I should even do plus 1.01 .01 just to have a little bit of, just to make sure that it's never zero strength as well. It never turns off like that. Now we change the degrees and, and you can see it's, it's still pretty drastic in certain, in certain places, but nothing, nothing close to what it was before. Okay, cool. So now uh, we have our basics done. Uh, I want to increase the amount of uh, spin force guys here, how many spin force points we have. So I'll just right click on the slider, edit, say that the maximum of the slider should be like 30, ramp it up to like, let's do 23, should be good enough. Rotate around again. Ooh. That's a drastic change in, in one place. Uh, if you don't like the, the way it changes in certain cases, you can always go for random seed and change the random seed. What we like, 666? Nah, 330. And we try again. Yeah, that seems cool. Okay, so we are done with this portion. Now, Let's make it pretty. Now it's time to make it pretty. So for these points or for these lines, we want to add a certain thickness to them. And we want to create basically a box right from them. So the fastest way of how to make boxes that don't crash your computer is through creating a mesh, right? So I'm going to say we have these lines. Let's offset them, offset curve. Let's offset these lines and let's offset each line individually. Apologies. That means I need to right click on the move output and choose graft. This will place each line in its own data branch. So they don't, they don't see each other anymore. If that makes sense, they are in their own little packets in their own little branches. And for each line, I will give two numbers for the offset let's say minus five and plus five or minus one and plus one so that it offsets to both sides at the same time. So let's do a slider five and let's get a negative of that slider negative five and let's just feed them in uh, holding the shift key negative and the positive. And you can see now we get this offset going on. That's great. We can hide the original one. No need it anymore. And I'm going to create a, a rectangle from this. So you could loft. That's, that's fine. You could use loft. No, you can't. Why can't you? Because the offset curve for some reason decided that it wants to yeah, okay, sure. The offset curve for some reason decided that it wants to place um, this line into its own separate branch and this line into its own separate branch. We don't want that. So we will use trim free, trim tree, and look at it again. And now loft works, right? That's um, just me saying that, okay, if, if you are placing the every pair of, of lines into separate branches, can you just do, not do that and bring them back into one 
big branch. So that, that's what trim tree does. Um, this takes 37 milliseconds, which is actually pretty fine. We can use that. Yeah, sure. Let's use that. This, this, uh, I thought that this is going to take longer, but it's actually not taking that long. So we're using loft. Sure. Um, but from the loft, I'm going to create simple mesh. So what simple mesh does, basically it takes every surface and converts it into a mesh as long as the surface has four points. And these surfaces do have four points, so we have um, a thousand meshes. Yay, a thousand meshes. At this point, these meshes don't need to be um, in separate data branches. So I will right click on the M output and choose flatten. There we go. Now all of them are a big happy family again. Everyone sees everyone, right? Just a list of, of meshes. Now we need to give it a uh, height, right? We need to give these meshes height and not just any height, but actually I want the height to vary and the variance is up to you. You know, you can do random again, you can do how close they are to the spin forces and so on. What I want to actually use or reuse is, uh, where's that little vector here? the field output. So I'll just grab a vector component, like so, connect the, the, the field tensor output to the vector, and just drag it all the way to where I will be using it. Just keep keeping things clean. You can even make it cleaner if you double click on the wire, like that, and drag out the relay like so, meaning that you can have a straight line now. The relay is just, it does nothing. It's just a way of how to reposition it and also on how to... It's, it's just a convenient thing. No functionality whatsoever uh, to it. Okay. So now we have a vector and my thoughts are we can measure the angle between two vectors, between this bad boy right here and between... Um, the, the, the second vector would be, let's say, x, right? So we measure the angle between this and x. And if... Sorry, I'm, I'm thinking. So if this... Uh, and the output is, of course, in radians, as per usual. We don't do radians in this uh, channel. We do degrees. So I'll write degrees. So we get the output. It's going to be mostly positive outputs, but also it can be negative, right? It can rotate to another direction. So I'm just, just to make sure, I'll do absolute. So every negative value is changed to a positive. That should make sure that everything is plus, right? Um, so we have that. We have our uh, little absolute value here. And now I'm going to remap, remap these, uh, these values uh, from uh, degrees to extrusion height, right? So our range of degrees that we get from here is somewhere between 0 and 180, right? So 0 uh, to, or, or slash slash 0 to 180. That's the range, right? And our target numbers, the values for extrusion, needs to be, I, I don't know, somewhere between um, 0 0.1 to, to what? Uh, 10? Let's try 10. Like that. So small numbers get 0 0.1, largest numbers get 10, and everything else kind of gets remapped to... To this new range. So for these meshes, we we have uh, a thousand meshes. We have a thousand values here. I can just say, um, is it Viewerbird? I think it's Viewerbird, right? Viewerbird transform mesh thicken. We will use this one. There's plenty of different ways of how you can extrude the mesh. We'll just use this one. Viewerbird's mesh thicken. 
meshes come in. Distance for extrusion comes in here. And that's it. We are done. Now the out output can be custom previewed. Okay, we're not done. <laughs> I forgot one thing. You can see that the shading is weird, right? And the shading is weird because of one thing. And also it's upside down. Maybe. Let's increase this to like 100 to see better. It's a little bit weird. Ain't gonna lie. I think we need to um, flip, or maybe, no, we don't need to flip these. I just wonder why is the, the, the shading weird? What did I do here? Absolutely nothing. That's, that's exactly the same thing as I did um, uh, what, what I'm doing right now. So let's, let's just investigate a little bit. Sorry about this. Another hiccup in a short period of time. What if instead of flattening here, we graphed this, and instead of um, not having this grafted, we graph this as well. Yeah, now it works. Sure, it didn't like uh, the fact that we asked it to extrude a thousand meshes with a thousand values all at once, so instead we give it one, 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 a thousand times, right? So we're giving it pairs of meshes. So just make sure that this is grafted and this is grafted and you're going to be good to go. All right. So now uh, we definitely don't need a hundred anymore. Let's do something a little bit more. Uh, maybe not 10. We can do like 20. Yeah, something like that. Let us also fix the shading. Again, the shading is weird. So um, it's welded, meaning it doesn't understand. It's trying to shade it as if everything is a sphere. Uh, we don't want that. So we're going to do unweld, unweld mesh. That should immediately fix it. Yep, does the trick. Now everything is a pretty nice stick. That's cool. And we are done. That's it. We go to Arctic view, let's say. Oh yeah, this is being previewed. No, we look at the old, uh, uh, at the new one. And the Arctic pre preview looks like that. If I change the degrees slowly, you can see that the waves change and some become bigger, some become smaller. It's just nice. Okay. Let's increase... Uh, by the way, every time when you look at something and it's... Oh, it doesn't look that great. Just increase the resolution. It's going to make it look nice. So instead of a thousand points, I will use 5,000. Bam. And by bam, I, I mean... Wait. There we go. Bam. 5,000 points. Cool, huh? That's it. Then you can uh, you can change the length of the line. Let's say if you just use 20, then it becomes, you know, just these boxes. So make sure that you use like a, a decent, decent amount, like 80 or something like that to get a nice sticks. Uh, then for the offset, if you use something low, it's going to be a little bit more hairy. If you use something big, are going to get this aesthetic, so you can get uh, a lot of different aesthetics, I say, I, I'd say. Um, and that's that. So now to animate this and to actually get the looped animation, all you need to do is just position your camera nicely, like that. Um, not like that, like that. Perfect. And then you right click on the degrees slider choose to animate 
say to which folder you want to save, um, give it a resolution at which you want to save, and give it a frame count. So usually it's 30 frames per second, meaning that this would run for 10 seconds. Or if it's 60 frames per second, it's gonna run for five seconds, right? You hit okay, and it's going to start uh, saving the files one after the other. I will not show that part here because it's quite demanding on the, on the computer. But that is that, that is our tutorial. If you are lazy and didn't, don't want to bother uh, following this, uh, then you can just become a Patreon supporter and get this tutorial uh, together with every single other tutorial blah, tutorial file together with every single other tutorial file that I did uh, previously uh, for free. Well, not for free because you're paying for the Patreon membership. But that's that's the price to pay for being lazy. Lazy, lazy. Okay, we're done. I'm gonna show you the final output right now. <laughs>